So in a time where it's almost impossible to find video cards on the market these days, I thought this video would be useful to a lot of people out there. We are going to see how to heavily improve the performances of your current video card, hopefully buying you some time until prices of newer generation cards stabilizes and go down. Now, did you ever uh, wonder why the performances of your video card would decrease over time? It seems like from the day you got it out of the box to today, it's really a different animal. The good news is it's not just an impression and something that you probably can fix uh, with a little bit of patience and at a minimal cost. Now, I have received a couple of 2080 Ti's from Asus dual cards and uh, they are about the most powerful cards you can have even today. And even though they were almost untouched and barely used, they would not perform as expected and in fact would perform as badly as a budget card such as the 2060 and the question was what is going on but thanks to my french wisdom i was able to dive in the quantum world of its very beating heart and find an easy fix to bring it back to its former glory fun fact for you french wisdom is also the nickname of my ass Thermo throttling is probably what your card is doing. In short, it means that your video card is slowing down its most uh, uh, heat producing components to save itself from a burning scene of hell and fire. It happens as a pads and paste which transfer your components heat to the heat sink starts to age and lose their ability to do so. Now, two kind of components are usually the most affected by thermo throttling, the GPU itself and the memory. Both these components have high heat tolerance, but if they heat too much, they will slow down to reduce heat production and protect themselves from simply burning up. Our mission today is to run our dual OC as it is, uh, run a couple of a stress test benchmark and see which components are most affected if not both and fix it. Now the 2080 Ti is a workhorse. It comes with 11 gigabyte of DDR6 RAM and a monstrously specced GPU which I have reviewed in depth a couple years ago and you should be uh, checking if you haven't done so just yet. Now for my diagnosis I have decided first to do a full 3D Mark run on TimeSpy whilst monitoring both GPU and memory high temps and results were telling. The card's fans went straight up to 100% run as soon as I applied any kind of load to the card and frames per second were much lower than what a 2080 Ti should be outputting. The video scoring was half of what it should have been, performing lower than a 2060 budget card. A quick look at our temps and we can see that the GPU stays cool enough but that our memory is way, way too hot, flirting with the 110 degrees Celsius limit and obviously heavily, heavily thermo throttling. A quick benchmark on Fermark will confirm the finding and after about the 15 seconds of the run, we can see the card wattage consumption falls drastically and continues to do so to try to stabilize the memory hits. Frames per second fall in turn, giving us a score only budget card should be outputting. Clearly, whatever cooling solution is under the hood is no longer working. Now, after quickly removing the air blocks, the problem was more obvious. The memory and VRM thermo pads had completely dried out with time and lost all of their adhesive quality. They were simply no longer transferring heat from the memory to the heat sink, explaining this outrageous temperatures and it's probably the same story with our VRM. In a nutshell, we have to replace the thermo pads. But before removing them make sure to check the existing thermopad's thickness, which in our case is one millimeter. If you replace them with thinner thermopads, so you, you run the risk of not having a total adherence between the components and the heatsink, and if they are too thick, other components on your GPU might not have a contact with the heatsink, such as the GPU, obviously, and that's something you really don't want to do unless you want to see your very expensive video card go kaboom, kaboom. Boom. Now I have decided to go for an Arctic large pad which can transfer up to 6 watt meter Kelvin, probably a bit better than what these could do. And since we're at it, I'm going to replace the aging factory thermal paste with the MX5 Arctic which will give us at least 8 years of service, is non-conductive so should not interfere with the board components it might get in contact with and can transfer up to 10 watt per meter Kelvin worth of heat which 
is about as good as it gets. Now, after removing the thermal pads, it is obviously crucial to clean your heatsink surfaces to ensure as much contact as possible between the heat block and the thermal pads. To clean them, I am using 90 degree alcohol and a little bit of pressured air to make sure that we have a debris free surface. Then I quickly measure our thermal pad sizes and cut them one by one. Now, applying them is not difficult per se, but just make sure all cooling surfaces are covered and remember to remove the protective films or you'll probably kill your video card on the very first stress test. Something not fun to see. Now, moving back to our GPU PCB itself. Remove all the remaining pads, gently clean the surface, no liquids here, and finally remove the old GPU thermal paste. I repeat the measuring and pad cutting, making sure to cover all the most sensitive components in their entirety, and finally apply what I think is the right amount of Arctic MX5 thermal paste, hoping that I have not miscalculated any of the thermal pads thickness, because if I did, um, there might be zero contact between the GPU and the heatsink, and again, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Now, during reassembly, make sure that screws are placed back in the same order you found them. Some are longer than others, and if placed in the wrong hole, they might create a gap between the heatsink and the PCB. Again, something which might compromise components and heatsinks full contact. And that's about it. So it's not really very complex or even expensive, but of course, if it is your first time opening a video card, you really want to do it slowly, nicely, and, and yes, you will be voiding warranty on it. But since your card is already two or five years old, the warranty should be voided anyways. So now let's run our benchmarks all over again and see what came out of it. On 3 d Mark, we went from 7,000 points and below to a whooping 15,000 graphic points, more than double its original score, and the temps were basically cut in half. I mean, look at these memory numbers. We went from 110 Celsius to a cool, ice cool 70 degrees Celsius. Same story from Fermark 1080 benchmarking, which went from about 7,000 points of scoring to whooping 14,000, well above the average 2080 Ti scoring. So basically for as little as 20 bucks of, of, of thermal pads and thermal paste, um, we successfully brought back a 2080 Ti from the brink of self-implosion to its former glory. I hope this was as useful as it was to you, then fun for me to film, and most importantly, I hope you enjoyed my French wisdom.